Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, support the channel, guys. All it takes is one second. Uh, click a like, share, subscribe if you are brand new. And then hopefully, again, I can continue uh, to bring you value on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to cut this uh, broadcast a little short today. My daughter has uh, another round of her preseason uh, varsity basketball league today. So I have to finish this up and, and drive her uh, about 30 minutes away. So hopefully everybody is doing well. Again, uh, eight-day streak. For the S&P, uh, Green Streak finally got snapped. Uh, nothing to really write home about uh, for, the, for for the major indexes today. The Dow was down 60 points, S&P down 11. Uh, NASDAQ took a well-deserved uh, breather down about uh, 59, 60 points. Uh, the question is, is this one of those scenarios that we are setting up for a pregnant pause? Uh, if you watch the broadcast just in the last several months, you kind of know what the pregnant pause was uh, before we lost uh, the 50-day moving average. And just the same way we got tired, the sellers got tired on the bottom of the range, sometimes buyers get tired as well. And you can see here, after a big, big run here, you start seeing a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of heaviness. You start seeing, uh, instead of the whole stock market at once being pushed, you start seeing a little bit of disconnect. Some stocks are weak, some stocks are strong. That's called uh, the Christmas tree effect. And eventually, when stocks get tired, you get this really, really aggressive move down. Again, I'm not by no means imagination am I saying here, we you know, now we just reclaimed the 50 day moving average three days ago. Now we're going to lose it. We'll go back to the lows. No, no, no. Take a deep breath. No, nobody's saying anything. We're just saying keep an eye out for the next couple of days of stocks getting tired, not putting in a, uh, not putting in a higher high and a higher low. Just watch for signs. Start looking for signs. Because if you look at uh, the stocks that are still below the 50-day, like we've been discussing in the last several days, they're still grinding. That's a good thing, right? They're still grinding. So if you look, for example, like Microsoft, right? Despite the market being a little bit soft today, it's grinding. And look how close, speaking of Microsoft, guys, look how close Microsoft is to getting above this whole range here, right? This whole range here. And if you could get above this ruined range here, then you have a test coming up of the 50-day moving average. Look at a name, for example, like Amazon, right? Same thing as Microsoft. They're coming off the bottom. They're still well below the 50-day supply, but they're grinding. That's exactly what we've been talking about for the last couple of days. Even when the high flyers stop going up or at least pause uh, from going up, you're going to have other names start to pull up. And that's the point. Uh, we started talking about names, again, reclaiming the 50-day moving average, Oracle, right? We just talked about Oracle in the last couple of days. You can see Oracle. This is exactly what happens when you reclaim the 50-day moving average. You go, right? You go. Even despite uh, the weakness of uh, the overall, you know, the overall sentiment, you go. But here's the flip side, right? We always try to play devil's advocate. We always try uh, to be positioned on the thinking that anything could happen you have to be ready for both sides. Is there a chance that, uh, you know, today is slowly starting to set up for a pregnant pause, right? For, I, again, I hate the word blow off top. It's not a top. We don't call tops. We don't call bottoms. Maybe it's a blow, just kind of a pregnant pause. Just the same way we had a pregnant pause here. We had a pregnant pause here. Just something to watch, right? Something to watch. So if we do start losing today's channel tomorrow, we could take advantage on both sides of the market. Again, just because we are above the 50-day moving average, like I said, when we reclaim the 50-day moving average, doesn't mean the market has to go up every single day. doesn't mean your favorite stock has to go up every single day. And the, and the biggest concern on any market, like we talked about it last night in the video, is a scenario of can the market go up too far, too fast? Because if the market goes up too far, too fast, even the most aggressive bulls are going to turn around and go, let's just give it a couple of days. That's what the market needs. So the question going into tomorrow's session is, is this the start of a well-deserved rest, some profit taking for the next couple of days, maybe even a retest back to the five-day slash 50-day moving average cross? Or is this something just like, hey, you know what? We just need a breather, right? That's it. Maybe we just needed a breather. Those answers 
uh, we will get uh, tomorrow and uh, tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, on the stocks that had the big runs, that's where we can get the opportunity, right? That's where we can get the opportunity, not the stocks that are grinding. They're still trying to get above supply. The opportunity comes tomorrow if, right? Obviously, we don't know. If tomorrow is kind of a rollover day, okay, and today was just kind of a first inning or a first pitch of a little bit of profit taking to come again. In the perfect world, right? The perfect world, the market does nothing for two, three days. Or when I say nothing, maybe comes back into this rising orange line, which is the five day moving average, which is which is the shortest term sentiment. Because again, it's unhealthy every single day for stocks to go up linear. It's it's just unhealthy. Uh, because the ramifications are eventually gravity kicks over and you get kicked in the teeth. You don't want that. You want three steps forward, one step sideways, two steps forward, one step down, four steps forward, one step sideways. So we'll see what happens there. But there is a scenario, there is a world out there that I would love to see this happen tomorrow. Doesn't mean it will happen tomorrow. I'm saying I would love to see it from a trading aspect, from trying to take advantage of two sides of the market. So Look at two names that we on, on incredible runs, right? Let's look at Tesla. Let's look at Tesla first. So Tesla in the last, what, one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. Six days in a row has gone from 197 to 228, okay? Today it was down $1.60. Again, the same thing as we talked about the Qs kind of reflects on Tesla. Is this kind of one of those scenarios? Ah, oh, it's just a rest day. Tomorrow it's going to resume. Okay, cool. But the flip side is, well, what happens if it loses today's range? And that's where the value comes in. Doesn't, doesn't mean it's going to happen. We're just trying to prepare for it just in case it does happen. So if Tesla does lose the five, it does lose today's range, well, there's like a $5 move back into rising support. In a perfect world, again, we don't live in a perfect world, but in a perfect world is if Tesla loses today's range, we get a $5 move into the five-day moving average, we cover our short into the five-day moving average, and we go long for that balance because, again, that is the range. That is the trend. Again, we don't live in a perfect world, but can a man just, you know, can a man pretend for once something will go smoothly, right? We'll see. Same thing with NVIDIA, right? We know NVIDIA is going to see 130 again, right? We know it, right? We know they're going to run this damn thing up ahead of earnings next week. We know all these things. But again, can we get potentially a downside move before that happens? All day, all day today, 130, 135s, 140s for next week for the 830 expiration. They're betting heavy into earnings. We we get it, right? We get it. But look, the stock has gone from 97 to 130 in about seven trading days. What happens if it does lose today's channel? Can we get a back test? Yeah, I'm not saying $10, $15, but we get two, three dollars on the trade, and that's exactly what I'm looking for going into tomorrow's session. Because if you look at a lot of names, they need a breather. I mean, that's it's common sense. You know, no matter how strong the market is, it's not going to go straight up. No matter how strong a stock is, it's not going to go uh, straight up. And we have to, as traders, if you're watching this, you're an investor. It doesn't apply to you. We're talking about it from the trading side. So if Nvidia and Tesla and a bunch of other names start losing today's channels, we can get a backside downside tree. That's all it is. I'm not looking for a destruction of equity prices. I'm not looking for the lows. I'm looking for some alpha. That's it. Some alpha, two, three, four dollars, whatever it is, a dollar, whatever it is. Some plan that if the market is going to rest, we're going to take advantage on both sides of the market. And there's a lot of names like that. I'm just giving you a couple of examples. Meta is kind of the same way, right? Meta is kind of going sideways now, but do you see what I mean about it, right? You see what I mean? You have three days in a row that kind of this like rolling pregnant pause, right? A high, lower high, lower high, lower high. And again, same thing as, 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 you know, same thing as meta. Maybe it's just resting to go higher, which again, I have no problem buying the top of the range. But what happens if it takes out the bottom range here? Again, there is room for a trade to uh, the next support. So going into tomorrow, you know, I'm a little wary that the market's a little, could be a little tired. Uh, you saw a lot of names today reverse uh, AMD uh, that we talked about yesterday, reclaiming the 50-day moving average. Uh, had a massive gap up today to this 162 level. And look what happened. It just got tired. You see that, guys? It just pretty much gave back this whole range. It got tired. So it's not uh, indicative of where I think these stocks are going to be two, three, four weeks from now. I'm just seeing if we can take the advantage, if we are prepared, if we are, if our process is correlating to what, what I'm seeing, the price action, potential price action, 
All I'm seeing is, all I'm saying is, if we can get that back test tomorrow, I think we can take advantage of the profit taking of the rest date for all of these stocks to kind of rest and reset organically. Again, the market needs to reset organically. The last thing you want to do, have the biggest bulls in the world say, nah, 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 nah. too much, too much. Not for me, not for me. We want to avoid that. So organic rest, sideways rest, up, up. Up, rest, sideways, rest is good for the markets. So we'll see if that scenario plays out tomorrow. Guys, I'm going to cut this a little bit short. Hope everybody is doing well. With God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.